Well, we want to get some more perspective on the Apple story. Hatem Diab is a managing partner at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth. He joins us now from Los Angeles. Great to see you, Hatem. And I, you know, uh, it, it has felt like there's a storm of factors that are weighing against Apple in recent weeks. Would you would you chalk it up to any particular thing that investors are concerned about? Hey, John, good to be on. Good morning. Yeah, it does feel like a barrage of, of different things happening at the same time. You got the antitrust lawsuits here from the DOJ. You got the stuff in Europe. You got the slowdown in China. I think all of that together is, is really creating some uncertainty for investors. So at the end of the day, as uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because um, we spoke with your colleague Ross Gerber in the past, who's, who's, who's pretty constructive on the Apple business and some of the new products as well. How do you view a short-term storm with a big company like Apple? That's a really good question, right? So if you look at the Apple stock in the last two years, it hasn't really done much, right? But the market in general has moved up the last two years because of the AI story, right? And Apple largely has been not in it, right? They just barely mentioned AI last, last earnings call once or twice. Uh, but I think what you're gonna do, what you're gonna see down the road is Apple is actually very much in the game. And, and a lot of people are looking at these short-term short headwinds and really not understanding that long term, Apple has one of the biggest moats in tech. We all have iPhones. There is 2.2 billion devices out there. They sell about 200 million a year. And yeah, they're not, they're not growing that iPhone base, but they're growing their services. And I think when this foundational AI thing coming in, come in next uh, six months or so is going to be very, very transformational. Okay, and um, I guess at the end of the day, if investors are having to make one of these decisions on technology stocks, you know, it feels like Microsoft, which Apple was keeping uh, on its toes for so many years, has won over maybe a few more investors uh, in, in the last couple of years. How would you compare Apple to the other tech options out there? Okay, so let, let's let's kind of break that down, right? Microsoft has transformed itself into AI company in the last two years with OpenAI and some of the other investments they made. I think what Apple is going to do is they're going to have a chat GPT type uh, product, so a foundational model, but it's all going to run on the iPhone. So if you think about it, you're going to you're going to you're going to see Apple basically have uh, this LLM that is way way faster and it has a lot more privacy, uh, which means that they're going to have a lot less compute that needed to be used. And as a result, I think that product is going to do some <laughs> literally ninja type stuff that you know you, you, you don't see ChatGPT being able to do. So I think that's really what's what's in the back for them going forward. And uh, and then when that comes out, hopefully this year, uh, people will, will, will start looking at Apple again as a growth story. Okay. Um, anything else to keep in mind with Apple as an investment? Well, I mean, it's the cash flow machine, right? Like, even though they haven't grown their top line, you've seen their cash flow grow because their services are doing so well, right? So we're we're all basically using our iPhones for everything, and uh, and I think that that's going to continue to be to be the case, you know. I want you to stick around with us for just a second because we are getting some breaking news right now, which I do want to bring to our audience. Uh, it's surrounding Sam Bankman-Fried, the. Uh, FTX founder who, as we knew, was being uh, sentenced today for his role in the collapse of that crypto platform. We are just learning that Sam Bankman-Fried has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for fraud tied to the collapse of the digital exchange, which uh, in many ways caps his meteoric rise and fall. Uh, less than two years ago, he was the crypto king. And uh, last year, a jury found the 32-year-old guilty of stealing billions of dollars from FTX customers and defrauding investors and lenders to his crypto investment firm. Uh, we're going to still look through some of the details, but Adam, I, I do wonder if you have a reaction to the sentencing here. I know that the prosecution had been looking to sentence SBF uh, to between 40 and 50 years. They were concerned, given his young age, that... Uh, you know, if uh, if you had a shorter sentence that he might be able to get out and uh, possibly commit fraud. 
whereas his legal team had uh, had tried to argue quite strongly against that. There were a lot of experts that thought at the end of the day, if his legal team is pushing for something between, call it five and 10 years, if the prosecution is, is pushing for 40 to 50, maybe you fall somewhere in between. But, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing development at that time when the crypto excitement has also returned. What stands out to you with this sentencing? Well, I think it's a, it's a win for him. This guy should be going to jail for 200 years, in my my opinion. I mean, he, he stole so much money and he lied so many people. Uh, it's really unfortunate that uh, he's probably able to, 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 to get 25 and probably walk out after 10 or 15 for good behavior. So that's my opinion. You know, it's interesting because we were having a conversation earlier in the program about the fact that you have, uh, because of the the rally in cryptocurrencies that in some of the, in, in, in the case of some people who are owed money that that rally yeah. has actually helped to get them closer to being whole and within yeah. the industry there's sort of a conversation around whether or not we, we we've now pushed past some of the question marks surrounding the crypto industry because of the rally in Bitcoin itself is it worth having moments like this where we can stop and, and talk about the mechanics of the industry, uh, even if in the case of FTX, we were talking about the actions of, you know, a person or people as opposed to, you know, the, the pros and cons of investing in the world of cryptocurrencies. Well, if the asset class is 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 to be taken seriously as as an investment going forward, we need to remove any doubts around fraud and the the likes of SBK and, and SBF and, and 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 people like this and the and the system really should should go away, right? So that's been a huge huge de de detriment to it. Um, I think, and if if that happens, and if we as a firm, uh, we're involved with with having digital assets, and we have the hardest time finding custodians that we could trust because of all these issues. So I think this is very, very positive going forward.